I think we see this in the world of sport as well that you can you can line up and align for a, for a, a Olympic final or, or whatever, and you're lining up against very talented athletes who have probably trained as hard as you are, uh, probably got about the same amount of talent as you've got, but they'll all have very very different stories. And, and from my experience, the ones that consistently perform. Uh, are the ones that have a real understanding as to why they're doing it. Not just they were good at it, but why they need to achieve, why they, w w why they need to try and win an Olympic medal. Um, it's interesting, when we work, um, I was an ambassador to the British Olympic team two years ago, working with some of the younger athletes and the older ones over the years leading up to the Olympics, but particularly during the Olympics. And the one question myself and Steve Backley would ask them every single time is, is it, what, what, why do you want to, to, to be successful with the Olympic Games? Why do you want to win an Olympic medal? Um, and, and it's amazing how many of them can't answer that question because they're just really good at it. <laughs> They've been good since this, this, so it's just what they do. Um, and what we found out is that if you're not clear as to why you want to win an Olympic medal or, or why you need to win, then you'll probably get found out what it really, really matters. And I think it's the same in business. You get that honeymoon period where you're growing your business and you're just busy, busy, busy. But there comes a point where you need to take that step to another level. And, and if you're not clear as to why you're doing it and what it means to you, um, I don't think people are able to really take that step and, and we see that in sport. So with I perform, as you may have gathered, what we do is, and myself and, and Steve Backley will give, give examples of, of, of experiences through our career from a sporting perspective so it's quite easy to listen to and digest. And then of course hand over to Paul who will translate that in, in, into business and make it very, very relevant. And I think it's the, the, having the stories and the translation that, that's the key to any learning. Well having been an entrepreneur myself and taught thousands of entrepreneurs how to start businesses, there's three main areas which I look for and they all link into mindset. The first one is really the, is to fall in love with your market, not fall in love with your product. This is, goes against a lot of what we believe about entrepreneurs, but actually where we can see mindset failing immediately for entrepreneurs is they fall in love with a product, their big idea. They're, it's their baby, they attach all these emotions to it, and they totally disregard whether there's any demand for the product. So at one level it's a business problem, but for me it's more of a psychological and personal problem, is falling in love with your product. The second one is not having a strong sales and marketing process. Often you can rely on friends or network and you'll listen to what people want to hear, but if you want to have a successful long-term business that really scales, it's having a strong sales and marketing process. And I know very few successful business people who aren't good at selling, which means excellent communication and being trained in that, which is very important. But the biggest one comes back to everything we've been talking about, it's what I call entrepreneurial mastery. It's not just about managing your business, it's more important that you manage yourself. My first book was called Take Charge of Your Mind. It's about taking charge of how you think, how you feel, how you act on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And it all starts with self-awareness, which is the core idea behind I Perform. Is when I wrote this with Roger and Steve, I thought, what had I wish I'd been taught at school and university? What did I wish I'd known at 25? And it all comes down to this core idea of self-awareness and understanding what works and what doesn't work. There are, there are lots of crossovers between sport and business. You know, we're not the first people to have, have, have used sport as an analogy. Um, and, and you know, sport's been inspiring business and business has been inspiring sport for years. There are many business practices now that, that have been used in sport to in, in, increase performance in sport and, and vice versa. But um, I mean, a topical example at the moment, of course, is the England football team for the first time have now employed a sports psychologist and, and that's a big step in the right direction. But for me personally, um, the, the greatest challenge any sports person will face is, is that when you're young, you're fit, you're healthy, you've got a bit of talent and, and you know, you're just doing it and you're loving it, it's fine. And, and you, if you stay healthy, you're going to do really well. And, and in my case, I, I was the European Commonwealth champion by the time I was 20, off a bit of talent and a bit of hard work. Um, the challenge is when you get injured. Uh, and and uh, by 21, I'd broken my foot. And it was never the same again. Never, ever the same again. Uh, it was just one long, hard struggle of, of having this talent and this, this desire, but now having a body that was, was vulnerable. And, and managing that throughout my whole career was my greatest challenge. So how did I do that? Obviously, the sort of the, the, there's a practical side to it. Find a doctor, find a physio, find all that sort of stuff. But there was also the psychological side of it. And, and one of the things I'm most proud of is that even with the injuries and the setbacks, I had a very clear picture 
in my mind as to as to my long-term goal. Um, yeah, and there, there were stepping stones along the way, but ultimately I had one thing that drove me, uh, and that was to, to one day stand on the Olympic rostrum. And that might sound a bit corny, but if you have a big enough dream, then things don't get in the way, even something like being out of the sport for three years with injury. And there are so many examples of people who, who have been written off and they come back. Kelly Holmes won two Olympic gold medals in 2004. Terrible injuries leading up to that. Real personal problems as well, but she had the dream and hung on to it. So I think it's that understanding what it means to you. And the other thing for me was, was appreciation of, of the talent I've been given. Often we take our talents for granted. We take our opportunities for granted. Uh, and, and the successful people in sport don't do that. You know, they, they realise there's only probably a certain number of years you can do it, because it's probably a young person's game in most sports, and they maximise their, their, uh, on what they've got. And, and it's the same in business. So the attitudes for achieving in sport and business, yes, are very similar, but there are some very clear differences. Um, and and I'd, I'd like to mention one of the differences, because one of the most powerful weeks on the iPerform programme, clearly, for anybody, is, with, I think, week three, is on goal setting, which Steve Backley and, and Paul actually run, and Steve is an absolute master of goal setting, has a great, great stories around it. Um, and obviously in sport, goal setting is crucial, and it's the same in business, we all know that. But there is a difference. It, in sport, we were given the luxury of knowing the day, the time, the place of the Olympic final. So every day of your life is moving towards one moment in time, and it's very, very clear. Um, in retirement now and being in the world of business, nothing will ever be that clear again because goals move all the time in business. I mean, our business is changing all the time. You know, it's, things happen along the way and you're having to move. In sport, you are given the luxury of everything moves towards that one moment in time and you know you will be judged on that moment. Maybe it, the analogy here is the day you sell your business, maybe. But on the whole in business, things are moving all the time. So we talk a lot about the similarities in sport and business, but we also talk about the differences and, and, and the different ways to, to behave. So, it's all analogies from our end and backed up with, with, with the, the, the academic and, and business understanding of Paul. I could go on for hours with, with, it, with, with it, but you know, maybe that, that would be a big one. You know, being clear about your dream and what you're going for. And I think that's applicable in business. So many people want to be successful in business, most people fail. And it's the same in sport. It's usually the ones that, that hang on during the bad times. It's resilience is probably the number one characteristic of successful people over the long term, is they bounce back from adversity when others give up, and clearly sports is a brilliant example.